So today we have the opportunity to hear from the director of the exhibitions department here at the Penn Museum and also from the director of the community engagement department to understand how the Imagine Africa exhibition project has come together and its goals and intentions and how we hope it will really bring the Philadelphia community into the Penn Museum. So I'd like to introduce Kate Quinn, who is the director of exhibitions here at the Penn Museum, and turn it over to her and her staff. And then we'll have the opportunity to hear from Jean Byrne, who is the director of community engagement. So, Kate. Hello. Uh, as Lois said, I'm the director of exhibitions. My name is Kate Quinn, and I'm gonna run through the exhibition um, as it stands for Imagine Africa with the Penn Museum. During the course of the presentation, I will also turn over uh, a couple of the slides to our exhibit developers, Alison Francis and Kevin Schott. So, Imagine Africa with the Penn Museum is framed around one simple question. How do you imagine Africa? Project overview is organized by the Penn Museum. It will open on September 18th, uh, 2011 and run for one full year, closing September 16th, 2012. Its location is in the Sharp Hallway, which was the former Polynesia Gallery. Um, our primary audience is the West Philadelphia community, and we are trying to attract the rest of the city as well. Mission and goals for the exhibition. Our mission is Imagine Africa provides a space where the community and the museum collaborate to create a more relevant interpretation of Penn Museum's African collection. We have three goals laid out. First, to initiate a conversation with the community at large. Second, to gather feedback in order to develop a framework for visitor-oriented interpretation. And finally, to challenge preconceived notions of definitions of Africa. So our approach, how are we going to do this? We're going to present a context-based presentation of the African collection in order to enable visitors to provide informed feedback. Um, we do know that you can't just put out objects and, and ask people questions about them without any sort of context whatsoever. So we've broken down this project into eight specific tables, we're calling them, but they are sections. Very small kind of snapshots into what you would find in a permanent exhibition anyway. Um, so we'll provide context with each of these objects and each of the tables and be able to allow the visitors to respond to specific questions and to provide feedback on those questions and the objects that they see. So we're going to try to do this by making it personal. Ask the visitor, how do they imagine Africa? What do they walk in with? Sometimes um, visitors have to unlearn some things before they can learn what you're putting out there for them. So we're going to provide, as I said, eight thematic tables. And we're going to try throughout the exhibition to enable conversations. So there'll be various feedback methods throughout the exhibition where there'll be a little discussion area. Um, there'll be surveys that are going through three different kiosks in the exhibition, whiteboards throughout the backs of all of the tables so that you can provide feedback to certain questions um, or just comment at will as you go through. The first thing that you'll see when you walk through the exhibition is a huge threshold, interactive threshold wall. Um, it asks the question, how do you imagine Africa? And there will be a kiosk in the center that you can walk up to. And at that point, there will be close to 50 images um, and words that you can choose from that help define your idea of what Africa is. Um, and from there, it's kind of works as a shopping cart-esque type of thing where you can place certain, your choice of eight photographs or words that define Africa to you and hit submit, and then they embed themselves within the wall. So essentially, your, your picture of Africa will show up on the wall. The intention behind this is to come in, allow visitors to come in with their understanding of what Africa is in their own minds and to maybe leave with a different interpretation of what Africa is to them. In some pre-surveys, um, pre pre-visit surveys that we did, just very informally, we got a lot of comments back that people thought that Africa was a lot of safari and a lot of animals and tribes and they, they didn't have a lot of really strong context as to what, what it could be and although the various wonderful things about Africa, so we're starting with what they know and hoping to expand upon that as you go through the exhibition. So we're going to make it personal by allowing for lots of different interpretations of Africa. There will be different types of, of images that are more familiar and we'll get into some less familiar um, images and objects that people may not understand but will by the time they leave with strong context shown throughout the exhibition. We'll also have a jukebox in there where you can choose your own songs, what sounds like Africa to you, um, and learn along the way. There's context provided for each of the artists that are chosen, as well as the genre of music and the time frame. So the eight tables. There are eight thematic tables that are in the exhibition, and they go in order um, from Imagine Beauty, Imagine Strength, Imagine Changing, Imagine Power, Imagine Fashion, Imagine the Divine, Imagine Healing, and Imagine Creating 
Along with those eight thematic tables, we have a section called, what did we miss? What, what do you want to know more about? What did we forget to tell you? Um, what else do you want to know? Um, how does Africa sound? How do you imagine Africa with a large discussion area as you come in through the introduction? So with this, I'm going to turn it over to Kevin Schott, who will be able to take you through some more of the tables. Uh, so as part of the introductory experience, one of the first things we've talked about is giving content with the introduction, of what, how do you imagine Africa, and what is the Imagine in Africa project? So there's really three introductions at the very beginning, one which would tell you what is this project, what is the museum doing, pointing out that this is not a standard exhibit, but rather a way to get feedback from the community. Um, there will also be a section talking about our African collection at the museum. Uh, many people imagine that we have every possible artifact we'd ever want to see from Africa here but really points out there are definite limitations to what we can show people and what stories we can tell with the objects we have currently in our collection. As well as there being just a general overview of Africa, talking about Africa as a first place of humanity, Africa as a home of great civilizations such as Egypt, and kind of reminding people that there are connections with Africa that they don't know about, but are really out there already. Uh, so the first section is actually Imagine Power so that's how I talk about this one. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Um, so, just to briefly go over uh, the Imagine Power section, this, uh, this section really presents an overview of some of the great kingdoms um, that existed throughout Africa's history, not just Egypt that we know everyone is familiar with, but some other kingdoms like the Kuba Kingdom, um, Benin, Nubia, things like that. Um, so we have some great material that uh, is both from the African uh, collection and then um, some material from our Egyptian collection that we'll, be ha that we'll have on display to show some of the different styles and uh, pieces of material that these uh, kingdoms were creating, as well as some images. Uh, the image in this particular slide is actually the walls of, um, of Benin City. Um, so we're using those sorts of things to talk about these kingdoms that people might not be familiar with, but how they've developed in their history. And then next is actually Kevin's Imagine Creating. Yes, uh, we wanted to have at least one table to focus on a different learning style. So this table will focus on people who are hands-on learners and talk about the process through which something is made. So specifically in this table we look at uh, indigo resistine from West Africa. And as you can see in the picture it, talks, it shows people actually making this today. It's a craft which still exists in Africa and still is done today, but which has changed a lot to reflect uh, modern changes and modern conventions. And so it both connects sort of Africa to its traditional past, but also talks about contemporary Africa and the way that some of these crafts are changing in order to adapt and thrive in Africa today. And we have Imagine Changing, which would be Ali again. Uh, so Imagine Changing focuses on um, different rites of passage um, and how, how they're conducted throughout a, a host of different countries in Africa. And because there's so many things we could talk about as far as being rites of passage, we limited the table to talking just about initiation, coming of age rites, um, and funerary rituals. So it gives an overview of um, some, using some of the objects from the collection as well as some images we have of a couple of different initiation rites as well as a couple of different um, funerary rituals. And we also, each table has a contemporary issue um, connection that they talk about, you know, because some of these objects are, are quite old. Um, what, what are the contemporary issues? So this table really focuses on how um, initiation rates are being continued even in the modern world and how they're adapting to, um, to city life and to you know, kids who have college schedules who are doing their initiation rates on their spring break. Um, so that's a bit about that table. Next is Imagine Healing. Um, this focuses on both modern medical practices and traditional healing practices that are being used in conjunction with one another throughout Africa today. Um, we've got some great objects. The, um, the statue in the slide here was used um, for traditional me uh, medicine ceremonies. And we're also talking about um, some of the more contemporary use of uh, telemedicine throughout Africa as a way to combat limited uh, availability of specialists and doctors throughout uh, the continent. Imagine strength. Uh, this table is a little bit different from the others in that it is not set in Africa. 
Um, this is really presenting the story of enslaved African people who were brought to the Americas and were primarily focused by these people and what, what they brought with them um, from West Africa. And Imagine the Divine is Kevin. Uh, Imagine the Divine looks at the religious history of Africa and focuses mostly on Christianity and Islam, uh, since we know from doing uh, evaluations before people came to the exhibit that most people assume Africa to be mostly tribal religions still and don't understand the fact that most of Africa today is Christian and Muslim. Um, but what is interesting, it looks at sort of the ways in which these traditions are unique and distinct from Christianity as we went from Europe and America. Um, so it looks at different churches that have developed in Africa and different traditions of worship that have developed there. Uh, Imagine Beauty is a section that looks at African art. Um, this is an interesting section for the museum because most of the collection we have was originally purchased to be examples of African art. Um, and so we have great pieces that you can see in almost any sort of art history textbook, like the figure in the sculpture behind me. Um, but we also want to look at contemporary art and the way in which uh, the perception of African art has changed from a time when it's seen as basically tribal and primitive to the point now where African artists are truly seen as fully realized contemporary artists who are well known throughout the world and demand great prices for their works of art and are respected as great thinkers and philosophers as well as artists. Uh, the next section is Imagine Fashion. Uh, this one we picked because we wanted something that people could feel was personally relevant to them. Um, fashion and adornment is something we all consider every day in our, of our life, and so we wanted a chance to kind of talk about that and talk about how it had been done in Africa traditionally, how it's done in Africa today, but we also wanted visitors to look at their themselves, look at their own clothes, their own hairstyles, their own jewelry, to consider what messages clothing sends what have what they sent historically and what messages they can send now. And I think uh, the last section is about conversation. I'm sure back to Kate now. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. um, so throughout the entire space, we're trying to enable conversations. So as I said earlier, what we're trying to do to, to enable those conversations is to provide um, various methods throughout the exhibition. So there are white, whiteboard talkbacks throughout each table. Um, presenting a specific question, but allowing visitors to, to respond to that question. The questions will probably change as we're going through this year of, of surveying, um, and we'll be um, cataloging each of the questions and the answers as they are um, being populated through the run of the exhibition. We also have survey kiosks, which ask, it's a very um, pointed survey that we're trying to get a sense of which um, table, which topics um, people think work the best. What do they more? What are they more drawn to? What do they feel was less successful than than not? Um, what words can they use to describe how they think this this experience feels to them? Um, and it's about I think ten slides, ten questions long, um, and provides opportunity for commentary throughout in case one of the questions isn't as um, pointed as they would like, or if they want to add something to that question, the availability is there for them to do that. Um, it will also be an interactive website that will go along with the exhibition. Um, it also has a survey on it. It's, it's created a little bit differently. It's following the same format as the survey that will be inside the exhibition, but takes a little bit of a different tactic because it is online. It's taken into consideration that people aren't standing in that space, and so they have a different understanding of what we're trying to tell them because they can't see the objects or the interactivity that we're presenting. Fourth, there would be group kits. So when people come in groups, they would have an ability to, they're coming in differently. There's a different kind of conversation that will happen because they're in a group context and they may have a facilitator there who's asking certain questions. They have just friends with them. Um, so they'll be getting a different kind of questionnaire that'll go along with um, the exhibition because they're in a different type of environment coming into it. And finally, there's a conversation area within the gallery um, so people can come in and have conversations. Um, we have pointed questions that will go along with um, the discussion area. There'll be articles from popular, um, well, popular things, things that are in the news today, pop culture, and just different things that are happening in Africa to establish conversation and to get people talking about things. Um, there'll also be a comment book there so people can write a little bit more at length um, if they choose to. Um, I'm going to skip this because Jean's kind of has her own presentation that will come up next. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jean and thank you for your time. I'm Jean Byrne, I'm the Merle Smith Director of Community Engagement at the Penn Museum. 
And I would like to introduce um, Paulette Adams, who is our community coordinator for Imagine Africa. So um, a second component of this project that's very important is um, the first you just heard about is the data collection to help inform our renovation of the Africa Gallery here at Penn Museum. And the second piece of it, um, which is just as important, is to start a conversation with our community. The community surrounding the museum doesn't necessarily use the museum. And this is an opportunity for us to open the doors and say, this is your community and museum. So we're going to do this on a few different ways through programs and event, uh, events and partnerships. Um, and it's also a very important point of this project to not only start and meet the stakeholders in the community, have them on an advisory panel with us, but also to sustain these relationships over the years. Um, so this is not a one year uh, program as far as the events go. So how are we doing that? Um, we're doing it with community partnerships, cultural events, free community nights, community school partnerships, and a lecture series. So we'd like to just go briefly through um, when those programs are and what those programs are. So the first, first area we started working on before the exhibit came up is the community partnerships. And I'm going to ask Paulette, who's been out in West Philly along with me, to kind of give an overview on how we've been approaching that. Yeah, great. So it's been kind of a whirlwind, right, planning for Imagine Africa. It's been pretty exciting. But the other part is to see the opportunity to bring the community into the Penn Museum and to help them understand what this museum does. That it's um, a little different from some of the other things. It's not the art museum. So typically they think of paintings on walls. And the other swing, right, in Philadelphia tends to be hands-on for children or hand-on engagements like the Franklin Institute or the Please Touch Museum. So we started some engagement um, around the Penn First Thursday meeting. We figured we would start where we are in something that's already formulated. And that meeting uh, takes place with the Office of City and Community Relations. Glenn Bryan is the head of that whole department for Penn. And that meeting has over 100 people come into one room. And they're representing entities at Penn, but mostly entities in the community. So Penn has been able to get its feedback and to give information on what things are taking place at the museum and how we can connect and how we can have partnerships. And we had just overwhelming response when we first started talking about bringing the community in to have these kinds of partnerships with their museum and framing it in that way that this is your museum and we want you to come onto the campus and to come right across the street. You know, you've been here maybe for an athletic event but you need to come across the street if you haven't been here already. And that this museum really is for you, it's for families, it's for your children. And then kind of uh, pairing on the night at the museum, right? A lot of families had heard about that, children had heard about it. So it kind of demystified what type of museum this is. So it might sound a little commercial, but I had to use it, you know, the kind of bring people in so that they could get some understanding. No things won't come alive at night, but you know, there's really something here and engagement for you as well. Uh, we also did that by starting to attend meetings uh, for the Mayor's Commission on African and Caribbean Affairs, which is a monthly meeting and takes place in City Hall. And Councilwoman Jane Blackwell was kind enough to make that introduction for us because she is the chair of that commission. And again, we had an overwhelming response from people of all different African backgrounds, all different tribes, all different countries, also people of different Caribbean uh, background saying this is amazing that you're actually going to tell our story and you're not going to tell it um, with these kind of commercial settings that oh just come and look at zebras running or gazelles but there's actually more to Africa and you're inviting people to come in and to know who we are and you're going to tell um, our history our background and then we'd even talk then about contemporary issues uh, what really Africa is who Africa is and what we have to offer and then thinking of the many ways that it could really bring validation, not just to them, but to their children and to their teens who are often struggling with this dual identity that we are African people, but we're here in the United States. And how do we feel about ourselves 
because of all of the images that people usually see on television or in popular culture about Africa. We've also been um, <clears throat> just, there's a plethora of places that we've gone. So I'm just going to read some of them off. Um, the partnership CDC is the West Philadelphia NAC. So they um, encompass a great deal of West Philadelphia. And we've spent some time with them engaging around the museum and around Imagine Africa around this project. Um, the 16th and 19th police districts cover all of what we traditionally think of as University City, as well as Mantua, Mill Creek, and larger West Philadelphia, as well as uh, 55th and Pine. So again, engaging people in community settings and that meetings that they would normally attend and getting information to them and telling them that we're welcoming them in and then also explaining the Imagine Africa project. Um, United Block Captains is a way to get to the people behind the door who may not come to a meeting, who may not be interested in reading something in the weekend section, or those are all good ways to get to people. But we were going with block captains who can get to the person behind the door and let them know we want you to come and we want you to engage. Um, then I went to like, some of the smaller meetings, so neighborhood meetings, West Housing Concerned Citizens, Mill Creek Advisory Councils, which were made up again of representatives of larger groups and some of them were for people behind the door as well as cultural establishment, arts and spirituality, and a number of other engagements that were out in the community. Um, and then also working with the elected officials, certainly the Councilwoman Jane Blackwell, her office, and her putting out the information just everywhere she is and with all of her constituent relations personnel as well as the state representatives who cover these areas and Councilman Curtis Jones' office. So again, there are so many ways that we've been able to start to engage people and to build partnerships and to help them understand that the museum is here, uh, that they are welcome in, and then not only are you welcome, but there's something for you when you get here, for you and for your family. And the response has really been wonderful. It's, it's been more than we really could have imagined, that people are just sitting and like kind of chomping at the bit, waiting for this engagement to begin with Imagine Africa and then looking at what's going to go on even beyond that. Thank you, Paulette. And Paulette's um, working with the project for the next year. So beyond what we're talking about right now and building these partnerships, we're going to be growing more partnerships. Because with this project, it seems once we meet with one cultural group, it spawns off into a lot of different areas. So I'm just going to go through some of the events um, that are available this year. There's brochures around. If you go to the penmuseum.org website um, and go to the Imagine Africa uh, website, then um, you'll be able to see dates, et cetera, for all of these events. Um, through Paulette, who identified some of the cultural groups, we're going to be working with um, Community Education Center and doing an evening, evening of traditional African dance through to hip hop. And Rennie Harris is gonna be working with that with his younger group, Raw, so it's really gonna be a fun event. And that's on April 25th, um, 2012. We're doing an African music night with local West Philadelphia uh, musicians. And that is being coordinated by Gina Renzi of the Rotunda, so she's got a big a uh, crowd and a lot of musicians she's excited about bringing it over here. That's February 22nd. And then we're also working with the Philadelphia Youth Poetry Movements group, which is a really incredible group that gives young adults uh, a voice. And um, they also do poetry slams. They just won the national spoken word competition um, in California. And they're fantastic. They're going to be doing an evening on May 9th. A lot of other, um, okay, that was cultural events. I to remember PowerPoint. Um, we're doing free community nights. They're going to be on October 26, 2011, March 28, 2012, and May 23, 2012. Um, there's going to be free refreshments, entertainment activities, um, the Imagine exhibit and uh, a lot of other things just going on that night. So those are going to be really fun. Um, we have a large uh, degree of community partnerships. We, are, we already started working with the schools this summer doing uh, journaling programs with young children who are in writing camps. So they come in, they get a tour of Africa exhibit or our um, Egypt exhibit, and then they get to sit in the gallery 
and actually journal. So if you can imagine sitting under a 13-ton sphinx and writing about the experience. Um, this has been so successful with the schools we were working with this summer that we're actually continuing it through the year and going to have an after-school program. The kids from local schools will be coming and doing journaling. All of the local school, or most of the local schools um, will be coming here for a free visit and free bus. Um, we'll do a pre-visit with them uh, where we'll send out an African speaker who will kind of get them ready, get them excited to come into um, the museum. They'll have a tour of Africa, they'll do the Imagine um, exhibit with us, and then they'll get a free bus home. And then we're also doing a program at Parkway High School uh, where we're going to work with the African American history class and their teacher for a year-long engagement of different projects, bringing the students in here, letting them see things like careers in museums, to doing internships that have a slight pay to them, a small stipend, to working in the exhibit. And last, for right now, we have a lecture series that's going to be going on that is a variety of Penn professors talking about contemporary um, African issues. Uh, Africa and the World will be on October 20th, celebrating 10 years of Penn at Botswana. It's November 30th. Contemporary South African performance, February 28th. And cultural encounters in the diaspora when African and African American cultures meet. And that is April 18th at 6 o'clock. So it's going to be a full year of programming events. I'm sure they're going to be constantly changing and being added to. So for further information, you can just always go to the Imagine Africa website um, that's on the penmuseum.org website. Thank you very much.